I finally got some time, albeit very limited time, with the new Huawei Mate X. You know, the other folding phone. During a press trip to China to visit Huawei and learn more about them, an executive in the room took out the Mate X and told the room full of press that we could all film it and take photos of it, but that they needed it back in about an hour. Have you ever seen American football where like somebody fumbles the ball and everyone just piles on top of it? Yeah, kind of like that. Regardless, we managed to be civil enough and we all had a little bit of time and filmed and took photos, etc. And I figured I would try in that limited amount of time to do a complete walkthrough for you guys. Now, if you're not familiar, a complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you eventually be in the market to actually go buy it. Now, with that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the hardware. Now, firstly, I mean, it, it folds. We have an eight inch OLED 2200 by 2480 display when folded out, giving us an odd eight by 7.1 aspect ratio. So, you know, almost square. And when folded back, we have a front 6.6 .6 inch 19.5 by nine aspect ratio screen that does at least cover the majority of the display and makes it look almost similar in size and shape to say a Huawei P30 Pro. You open the screen by clicking this small button under the camera on the back to unlock it. This button, by the way, we were told is being redesigned to be flatter, so it doesn't accidentally get pressed whenever the phone is laying on a desk, and is most likely going to look similar to the one that the CEO was spotted with having not too long ago. Something else that's a benefit of the outward bending screen, besides just having a normal looking modern phone on the front, which is great, is the fact that it also has a 6.38 inch rear screen with a 25 by nine aspect ratio and a 2480 by 892 resolution. Now, most of the time this rear screen is off by default, but in some situations, like when taking a photo, you can turn it on to show the person in the photo the image you're taking. And of course, you can also use it for selfies too, since there are no other cameras on the Mate X besides the ones on the rear. Now, it's sort of interesting to think that Huawei does at least have an option of maybe creating other use cases that this back screen could be used for in the future but we'll see. Now, even though this was a pre-production unit, it seemed pretty snappy to me, and the software when folding and unfolding worked as well as one would expect. The Mate X only comes in one color, interstellar blue, but considering most of the time you just see screen on it, it's sort of not that important, I guess. Moving around the device really quick, we have a fingerprint sensor that doubles as a power button on the right side of the phone, as well as a volume rocker above that. On the left, we have the bent screen, obviously, but it's interesting to note that it does turn off this edge up to where the P30 Pro screen edge basically would be. At the top, we have our dual SIM tray that also supports nano memory, which is Huawei's proprietary memory format that fits in the size of a nano SIM slot, which apparently you can buy on some Chinese websites, but I have yet to see a working one in person, personally, but let me know if you guys have. On the bottom, we have our sole speaker, which sounds like this, but just keep in mind that, again, this is a pre-release model. No, but when you were all talking, it was hard to hear. Yeah. And next to that, we have our USB-C port that is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port and allows for Huawei's 55 watt charging that supposedly can get the 4500 milliamp battery inside from zero to 85% in about 30 minutes. It is interesting to see a 4500 milliamp battery in here, only 300 milliamps more than the P30 Pro and with a much larger screen. But since the P30 Pro is still one of the longest lasting phones I've used, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now. And as usual, we'll test that further in a real world test that I'll do on the phone whenever it comes out and if I get one. Subscribe and turn on notifications next to the word subscribe to be notified when that and other videos go live on the channel. There is no headphone jack, but Huawei does list the USB-C port as a type C ear jack, which is just funny. Inside the device, it's listed as running a Kirin 980 chipset, but since it's being reported to not come out until maybe November, it might even run whatever the newer chipset is, Kirin 990 maybe, whenever that's released. Now that is paired with eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. We also have Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi 802.11ac, Qualcomm Aptix HD Bluetooth streaming, LDAC, and HWA audio. And as you can tell by this little logo, the device will come with 5G support. For the camera on the back, we have a slightly similar setup to the Huawei P30 Pro, albeit with different aperture levels and focal lengths for some of the cameras. We have a standard 40 megapixel, 27 millimeter equivalent F1.8 aperture instead of the F1.6 on the P30 Pro that has phase detection autofocus. We have an eight megapixel F2.4 aperture instead of the F3.4 on the P30 Pro, 56 millimeter equivalent telephoto, which 
is a two time zoom instead of the five times on the P30 Pro, by the way, and a 16 megapixel instead of the 20 megapixel on the P30 Pro, f2.2 aperture, 17 millimeter equivalent instead of the 16 millimeter equivalent on the P30 Pro, wide angle lens. And lastly, we have the same time of flight depth sensing camera as the P30 Pro. Now, regardless, the photos we were able to quickly take in the room on the pre-release software definitely remind me of shots from the P30 Pro in terms of quality and the color science, which makes a lot of sense. One cool difference that I already mentioned briefly is that you can use any of these cameras as your selfie camera, since we can use the bent back of the screen as a viewfinder. Now, in terms of software, it's running the same EMUI as the P30 Pro, which will probably be 10 whenever that launches. And so I won't go into that too in depth since it's not really new. The only things I noticed that were unique to the Mate X in the limited time that I had it is that selfie camera ability that I already mentioned and the ability to use both sides of the display as a split screen. Now, it didn't seem to be able to do more than two windows like the Fold can, but again, all of this is pre-release software, so who knows. The device is again now rumored for September or even November and will cost about 2,300 euros or the equivalent of about 2,550 US dollars. Thing is though that it will most likely launch first in China and then subsequent markets after, but the US is looking like a very unlikely market to get one, of course. Also, we're being told that it will be in limited supply when it does launch, similar to the Galaxy Fold. So getting your hands on one will not only be expensive, but quite difficult in all likelihood. Now I will do my best to try to get my hands on one of these, whether it's to borrow it for review, or maybe even I might try to buy it from China. We'll see how that goes. Um, but then when I do, I will do more videos on it and try to do like a real world test where I'll try to, you know, actually test it out and give you guys an opinion on it. Otherwise, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel to be notified whenever those videos and other ones go live. One thing I can say, at least from the very limited time that I had with the device, it feels good. Like I bent it back and I was, I was almost like scared because it was sturdy enough that I thought I was actually like doing, like bending it in a way that I wasn't supposed to, but it's just a very like solid hinge. Um, I felt the same way about the fold, honestly. Like I think with these devices being at the price point that they are, they are kind of a showpiece for these companies to show off what they can do, including the folding screen, et cetera, et cetera. They may not be the most practical at the price point, but they do, I think at least between these two devices that I've gotten a chance to use, they do a good job of making them feel like premium devices. I can't wait to try this out. Hopefully I'll get a chance to, and even to retry out the fold. Stay tuned again for more videos on both of those whenever that might happen. Otherwise though, as always, thanks for watching.